morning, this is Jim Smith, May 4th, 2020. Uh, just wanted to, first of all, talk a little bit about how much it continues to amaze me every day that I work with farmers and dairymen, people that are producing our food, especially during these incredible times, about their incredible resi resilience. Um, just never ceases to fail my astonishment at how they can work through some things that just seem surreal and just want to say thank you for all of that. But today we're going to talk a little bit about getting ready for that first cutting of alfalfa. And we're going to look at it a little bit differently maybe than what we have in the past. We're still going to talk about some of the usual things, but want to also cover some things maybe that we haven't looked at um, in the same way. So we're going to talk about understanding what you got on hand currently for inventory. We're going to talk about maybe some things that you'd want to do to set up your equipment a little differently based on what you have for inventory and the quality you got. We're going to talk about some tools that you can do to measure where things are at in the field. Uh, and then also just kind of bringing it all together at the end. So when we do that, and we're talking about understanding our inventory, I think it's important to gather your nutritionist, your agronomist, crops manager, others, and understanding what the quantity and quality on hand is and how that complements the rest of the forages on hand. And then also look at maybe what you have in byproducts in the way of inventory or on contract. Then do the math and plan for what you need for that first cutting. When we talk about that, one of the things that I'm going to concentrate on quite a bit is ash content because really that's just contamination of the product that we're trying to feed our cows. The average internal ash content of alfalfa is about 8% and grasses is about 6%. One of the things that I would throw out to you is when you look at what your equipment has, try to use the flattest knives possible to avoid vacuuming the soil up. And then the higher the cut height, the lower the ash typically. So that's another consideration. If ash contents are pushing past 10 and 11 percent, management changes probably should be considered. The other thing that we want to look at on the equipment is opening up that cutter to get the widest possible wind row you can. 80 percent or better if possible. This will improve the drying rate, lower the plant respiration losses with more total plant tissue exposed to sunlight. It kind of fools that plant into not using up the sugars to respire, but if we've got it tucked away in a big deep windrow, there's a lot of respiration going on in the quality of our alfalfa sitting in the field after we cut it's going down. So those are a couple of the main things that we want to talk about. When we talk about inventory, I wanted to pull up some numbers just so that we understand exactly what we're talking about when we talk about managing this first cut. So a study that was done at the University of Wisconsin over 10 years found that on a five cut system, that first cutting of the five cut system represented about 32% of the total yield. If you look at a study from Michigan in a three year study under a four cut system, which is probably more common for where we're at in Wisconsin, first cutting averages about 40% of the total yield. So that first cutting is terribly important, but it's also maybe an opportunity for us to manage that cut height in a little different way. So again, 40%, keep that in mind. I want to bring up some other studies that were done in 1999, 2000. They showed that in that study, with each inch that they moved up in the cutting height from two inches, there was a loss of about 0.5 tons, or for this particular study, about 10% for the year, okay, out of a potential five tons when all four cuttings were added up. Now let's, let's just apply that to our first cutting on a four cut system. With the first cutting representing about 40% of the total yield, a one inch up, move up for that first cutting it would equate to approximately a 4% reduction in total dry matter yield for the year as compared to the normal cutting height that you would have on the first cutting and the remaining cuts. So you got to ask yourself, okay, we might lose 4%, but what do we gain? So you look at that same study for each increase in cutting height by one inch, they gained about four points of relative feed value. Now that's not a big number, but it is moving in the right direction. But the other potential bonuses in moving that cut height up for quality is reduced ash content. 
and reduce drying time potentially with that increased airflow that you could get under that windrow by sitting up a little bit higher and possibly lower repair costs on our harvest equipment with fewer rocks running through the equipment. Okay, so now we're gonna look at some of the tools that you can use to measure without having to go out there every day. Alfalfa works from a base temperature of about 41 when we start talking about the GDU method. And you only begin accumulating those growing degree units once the high has reached 41 or more for five consecutive days. 700 GDUs total represents bud stage. At 800, it's the first flower. So I looked at some measurements this morning as of May 3rd, near Hammond, Wisconsin, we're at 190 GDUs for alfalfa. Edgar, Wisconsin, about 156. Pulaski sitting at 178. Oxford towards the middle of the states at 191. And down in Madison, we're at 254. So that's one way we can track where the field is at as far as maturity. The second one that a lot of people are familiar with, the peak stick, which is very accurate for the first cutting, what you do is you go out and you go to four or five two foot squares in a field that represent that field. You look at the growth stage of the most mature stem, measure the tallest plant at the stem tip and take the reading. But absolutely remember to subtract about 20 points from that RFD value in the standing crop to accommodate harvest and storage losses to better estimate what you will actually end up feeding your cows. And also remember on the peak stick method that if you have harv extra, you probably need to add about 15 to 20 points to come up with a closer to real life RFV value when you're talking about harv extra. All right, this next one, all right, we're ready to cut. But keep in mind what each part of that plant brings to the ration. So look at the top left in this slide. It's a fairly good representation of the quality of what we have in that plant at cutting time. And you can see those lower leaves, and anybody that's looked at alfalfa knows that when you pull that plant back out in the field, those lower leaves are typically not as green, not as healthy. So again, if we need to move that cutting height up either to lower our ash content or gain in relative feed value or improve our drying time, we're not really losing the best part of the plant. And we definitely know that that lower stem while it adds to the tons, is not adding to our feed value. So, top of the plant, high protein, high digestibility, less effective fiber, and lower tons. Lower part of the plant, lower protein, lower digestibility, lower quality leaves, more effective fiber, and higher tons. So that's why you gotta involve everybody in this decision to understand what you actually need on that farm. So. Here we go. Cutting height is actually about tons, quality, and potentially stand longevity on challenge stands if root carbohydrate reserves get pushed too far when cut height is reduced on short cropping slash cutting intervals. The cutting height quality equation is potentially is related to what we bring to the bunker in the way of ash content. So don't forget that because we just don't need to feed our cows more, more dirt, okay? The best potential for a positive return on fungicide is when we know the plant is going to be in the field longer, like first cutting, or with an intentional extension of the growing window with Harv Extra on a one less cutting system. That's when we got the best potential with our fungicide application. Next thing, make sure the storage areas are clean and well drained. Make sure you got enough pack tractors on the bunker or pile to get as close to that 40% of the weight of the haylage that is coming in per hour. Make sure you got your oxygen barrier plastic plus a six mil piece to go over it or two six mil pieces is just as effective and plenty of tires. The other thing is make sure you're using a crop specific inoculant like 11H50 that will save you on average over not inoculating about three and a half percent of your dry matter and preserve the quality of the plant protein versus excessive amounts of soluble protein in the form of ammonia nitrogen that can potentially cause the cow to use up a lot of extra energy trying to metabolize that. Okay, 
So let's bring it all together. Know what you need from your first cutting. Pay close attention to the maturity and how that fits with the predicted weather coming up. Make the necessary changes in the equipment to accommodate those needs. Have your plan well ahead of time and be ready to adjust based on what we have talked about today. And then reach out to your local Pioneer Agency for all your alfalfa and seed needs and your crop specific alfalfa inoculants. Thanks and have a great day. And again, thank you for everything that you're doing to bring us through this crazy time that we're in today. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.